Yeah. Please fill me with the Ruach HaKodesh, that it may speak your written words with boldness to those who listen. I ask all these things in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen. We'll start with the Shema. Listen and obey. Children of Yah, pay careful attention and respond. Yahava is our power and authority. Yahava works in unity with himself, and you shall act upon your love to Yahava with your power and authority, with your thoughts and mind, with your entire body, and with all the muchness that you have. Romans 14. Now, as for a person whose trust is weak, welcome him, but not to get into arguments over opinions. One person has the trust that will allow him to eat anything, while another whose trust is weak only eats vegetables. The one who eats anything must not look down upon the one who abstains, and the abstainer must not pass judgment on the one who eats anything, because God accepted him. Who are you to pass judgment on someone else's servant? It is before his own master that he will stand or fall, and the fact is that he will stand, because the Lord is able to make him stand. One person considers some days more holy than others, while, other, while someone else regards them as being all alike. What is important is for each to be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes a day as special does so to honor the Lord. Also, he who eats anything eats to honor the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. Likewise, the abstainer abstains to honor the Lord, and he too gives thanks to God. For none of us lives only in relation to himself, and none of us dies only in relation to himself. For if we live, we live in relation to the Lord, and if we die, we die in relation to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Indeed, it was for this very reason that the Messiah died and came back to life so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For all of us stand before God's judgment seat. Since it is written in the Tanakh, as I live, says Yahweh, every knee will bend before me and every tongue will publicly acknowledge God. So then, every one of us will have to give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let's stop passing judgment on each other. Instead, make this one judgment, not to put a stumbling block or a snare in a brother's way. I know. That is, I have been persuaded by the Lord Yeshua the Messiah that nothing is unclean in itself, but... If a person considers something unclean, then for him it is unclean. And if your brother, being upset by the food you eat, your life is no longer one of love. But do not, by your eating habits, destroy someone for whom the Messiah died. Do not let what you know to be good be spoken as bad. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, shalom, and joy in the Ruach HaKodesh. Anyone who serves the Messiah in this fashion both pleases God and wins the approval of other people. So then, let us pursue the things that make for shalom and mutual upbuilding. Don't tear down God's work for the sake of food. True enough, all things are clean, but it is wrong for anyone by his eating to cause someone to fall away. What is good is not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. The belief you hold about such things, keep between yourself and God. Happy the person who is free of self-condemnation when he approves of something. But the doubter comes under condemnation if he eats, because his action is not based on trust, and anything not based on trust is a sin. Hmm. We learn to love our Creator after reading Romans 14. We can learn a lot. Welcome all, even those with little trust. Do not argue with those who have little trust. Encourage those 
with little trust so that they may have more trust. Know that God accepts both, one with little trust and one with more trust. Trust that it is the Lord which is our master that is able to keep us standing. Be convinced in your own mind what days are holy and observe them even if all around you choose not to. Observe a day as special to honor the Lord, our master. Eat in order to honor the Lord, our master. Abstain from eating in order to honor the Lord, our master. Live in relation to our Lord, master. Also, when we die, die in relation to the Lord, our master. Trust that Yeshua the Messiah died and came back to life so that he might be Lord, master. Of both, the li- of both the dead and the living, trust that all of us will stand before God's judgment seat. As the Tanakh says in Isaiah 45, 23, as I live, says Yahweh, every knee will bend before me and every tongue will publicly acknowledge Yahweh. Trust that everyone will give an account of him, of himself to Yahweh. Choose to live a life set apart to Yeshua full of repentance and obedience to Yehovah's written word with direction from the Ruach HaKodesh. Aim not to put a stumbling block or snare in your brother's or sister's way. Be persuaded by the Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Live a life full of love. Trust that the kingdom of Yahweh is righteousness, is shalom, is joy in the Ruach HaKodesh. When you When you serve in this fashion, you will win the approval of people, but more importantly, you please Yehovah. Pursue, that is go after and seek, the things that make for shalom and mutual upbuilding. Do not do the things that will cause a brother to stumble. Keep something between you and God alone. Act upon your trust. How can we love others as Yeshua loves us? We can build up your brothers and sisters in Messiah, even if that means eating what you don't like and not drinking when around them. Produce spiritual fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, humility, and self-control. How can we bear one another's burdens? We can build each other up in love and trust in Yeshua. Uh, the one verse that Shaul pulled from was Isaiah 45:23. I want to skip over that. I know I read it just a second ago, but I do want to turn back there. It's a good habit to always look and see from the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, the Tanakh, Isaiah 45, 23. Isaiah, who wrote Isaiah? Isaiah wrote it. And it is one of the only intact scrolls from beginning to end found in the Qumran caves that is in Jerusalem right now. It's actually hidden away underneath the replica that's in the museum in Jerusalem. How awesome is that? That the Old Testament gospel is right there in front of everyone to see. 4523, 4523. Four. In the name of myself I have sworn from my mouth has rightly gone out, a word that will not return, that to me every knee will bow and every tongue will swear about me, that only in Yahweh are justice and strength. All who rage against him will come to him ashamed. I will read one more. But the descendants of Israel will find justice and glory in Yahweh. End with the Arianic blessing because it's awesome. Yahweh will kneel before you presenting gifts, and he will guard you with a hedge of protection. Yahweh will illuminate the wholeness of his being toward you, bringing order, and he will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahweh will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon you and will set in place all you need to be whole and complete. Amen.